And Alan Kay was in his group. And he can tell you a vast number of stories about, quote, managing, close quote, Alan Kay. Alan Kay is a very independent spirit, and he never was managed at all. But my brother took some responsibility for that. And of course, Xerox Park did a great deal of man-machine interaction work. Uh, I think Steve Jobs came around to visit Park and saw what was going on with the Alto, and the Macintosh was the result of that. So uh, I, I was, you know, a party to much of this development that went on, either as an observer or a participant. And I think it's been an exciting, an exciting period. Sketchpad is now nearly 50 years ago. And it's been 50 years of a continuous development of usability of machines for all kinds of purposes. And of course, the machines are thousands of times more powerful now than they were when we started. The important question for the future is, where do we go from here? I was amused to see that the religious wars about how to interact with a computer broke out right in this room this morning. <laughs> And I've watched those religious wars over and over and over again. And my counsel is, live and let live. <laughs> the right editor to use is the one you know. Okay, the right kind of bicycle to ride is the one you know. Okay, the right language to use when you speak is the one you know. And the same is true with computer interfaces. The one that you should use is the one you know. And I have no objection to a command line person <laughs> who says, I like command line. They're terrific, and if you understand them and you use them, a few keystrokes get you a lot. And the people who love command lines just say they're the only thing to use. All of the measurements that I know of, of productivity using computers, say that people who are who have good ideas about what to do, are lots better at doing them, independent of the tools. I will assert that Picasso would have made terrific art on computers if he'd had them. Okay, what was great about the man was not the tool he used, but what was in his head, how he was able to do it. And I think the same is true in sort of every field of human endeavor. I, I don't know how many of you saw Monsters, Inc. Can I see a show of hands for Monsters, Inc.? I loved that movie. It was a terrific movie. Now, what was great about that movie? Was the computer great about that movie? No! It was Lassiter's direction. It was the story. It was the fact that you could immerse yourself in a world that was quite unlike your own, in which infants were terribly frightening. And then there's that wonderful scene of all the doors. I mean, what a wonderful thing. What, it, you know, what an image it creates. And it would have been hard to create those images by drawing them in the old Disney style, but not impossible. And what's, what's wonderful about that work and what's wonderful about what Pixar is doing is not the technology, it's the results. And, and I, I kind of feel that we celebrate the people who get great results out of whatever technology. We celebrate the great artists who got wonderful things with oil on canvas. We celebrate the great sculptors who were able to find inside that hunk of marble some beautiful shape. All they did was to remove the parts that weren't David, right? And it didn't matter what tools they used to do it. it didn't matter how they polished the marble. We don't care at the end, but what we admire is the ability to visualize that shape. And thank heavens that people are all different, that some of us see things differently than others. And, you know, I, I find beauty in computer programs. You know, you can look at a computer program and go, wow, this is wonderfully pretty. And some computer programs are prescriptive. They tell the computer what to do. And other kinds of computer programs called the functional programs tell the computer what is desired and let the computer figure out how to get there. And the forefront of computer science today is trying to figure out different ways to get good results without having to describe step by step what they should be. 
And how are we going to continue to get another thousand-fold increase in computing power over the next 10 or 15 years? A, cr a critical problem to the continuing flow of capability that we've become accustomed to over the last 30 years. We've now run out of improved speed on individual computers. We have to figure out how to use banks of them together. Nobody knows how to do that. It's going to require a whole new set of thought. What I find exciting about the opportunities that there are around this field is there's lots of things still to be done. And, and I think the excitement that I sense in this meeting comes from the realization that there is that potential. And I urge you as you go forward to do the things that you find exciting. It doesn't matter what you do. What's important is that you find it exciting. Because the things you find exciting will lead you both to your own pleasure but also to the pleasure of others because you're likely to do them well. And we admire things that are done well, whatever they are. A fine meal, well cooked. A fine poem, well crafted. A fine letter. It's hard to write a short, fine letter, right? But when you get one, it's really nice. A fine conference, and this has been a terrific one. Some organizers put together a program here that's been interesting and varied. And I think they did it because they love the subject. I'm glad I came to meet all of you and, and participate here a bit. And I think I, I like to look forward and say, what's the future going to be? My father was fond of talking about the birds of Uchi Kuchi. He said, don't be a bird of Uchi Kuchi. Why not? Well, they always fly backwards so they can see where they've been rather than where they're going. <laughs> And what I find interesting is where are we going? <laughs>